In the earlier videos, I spoke of ROS topics having a topic type. And now I say ROS message types. So let's straighten that out first before we proceed. OK, we have ROS nodes in a ROS application. And nodes process information. And the information is organized as data structures. These data structures are called ROS message types. And nodes use topics to talk to each other and exchange information. Therefore, topic type is just an abstract concept. A topic just carries whatever information the nodes want a topic to carry. So if the same nodes exchange a different kind of information, the topic can carry that information. In essence, topic types are just abstract concepts and they acquire or inherit the ROS message type that they are asked to carry by the ROS nodes. So far, we learned how to create our own publisher and subscriber nodes. And we saw that the topic we published and subscribed to had the basic string as the message type. Fair enough. But hey, what are we doing sending string messages around when we want to build robotic applications with ROS? In robotic applications, we will often work with floating point numbers and perhaps even a combination of integers, floating point numbers, and strings. With such combinations, we can effectively organize and exchange real-world information about the robot and its surroundings with our ROS-based application. For example, we may have to exchange information about robot joint angles and corresponding joint names, or data from a distant sensor, or a position in 3D that a robot has to reach, and so on. Fortunately, ROS also provides and supports several derived message types. These derived message types are composed of a combination of basic message types. For example, the point message type can be used to exchange information about a point in 3D space. Or a pose message type can be used to exchange information about the position and orientation of a 3D rigid body in space. Further, ROS also provides message types with timestamp and a relative or absolute reference in combination with geometric information, like the point stamped message. This can be really useful when we have things moving. Well, yes, it would definitely be nice to have things moving in a robotic application, isn't it? Here, we will learn how to create custom ROS message types for our own ROS applications. In ROS, the message types are defined in, surprise, surprise, message files. That's very convenient to remember. The message files are defined in the MSGS ROS package in the MSG folder with the naming convention new message type dot MSG. For example, in your ROS workspace for this course, you can define new message types in the HRW ROS underscore MSGS slash MSG folder. Let us now look at an example. We have purchased a new ultrasound sensor for an application where we want to do some distance measurements. Our requirement is to define a new message type called sensor information. And this message type is composed of a field for the message type provided by ROS for interfacing with distance sensors, a string field for manufacturer name, and an unsigned integer field for the sensor part number. This is implemented in code in the sensor information.msg file as shown in this code snippet. In the first line, we define the sensor message type provided by ROS. In the second line, we define the string type for manufacturer name. And in the third line, we define the unsigned integer type for the sensor part number. And we are done. Wait, what? How do we know what types of ROS messages are supported for sensors? What is in those message types? How do we use this in code? Let's find that out in the next video.